How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So I have everything that I took to Tusk laid out right here, and we're going to go through pretty much everything in detail. So it's going to be probably a longer video, but I'm going to discuss the things that worked for me, the things that didn't work for me, what I would recommend. And ultimately, it's this whole class Tusk isn't really about the gear, honestly. The class is really meant for learning things about your gear. So don't go in copying everything that I have right now. Use what you have. You can buy some odds and ends, but go there with what you have, what you're gonna use if a real world event would occur, and then buy your stuff after you go to the class, because then you have so much more information of that didn't work, this did work, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna change camera angles, dive into it, and I'm gonna give you literally a debrief of everything. So let's dive into it. All right, let's start getting down into the details. So first off, we're gonna talk about my pack. So this pack is a Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 4400. Now, I am kind of unorthodox when it comes to packs as in I used to carry the heavy duty military ones, but I found they were just so heavy. Um, for example, some packs that I ran was stock with empty, nothing in them, eight pounds, 10 pounds. And I'm like, why, why is just the pack 10 pounds? Why can't we get something lighter that is equally durable? So I started researching about four years ago and I found this Hyperlite Mountain Gear want to test it out. So, so far I've had three or four of their packs and they have been very outstanding, including this Tusk course, which was fairly movement based. And, you know, you're constantly living out of this pack and everyone just says, oh, it's an ultralight gear. It's going to destroy itself. Well, here we are four years later of doing stuff like Tusk quite frequently and there is zero issues with it. So, I'm trying to bridge the gap and show that sometimes ultralight gear, depending on how it's made, can be beneficial in a military-based environment. Now, would this hold up for a year straight of that environment? I doubt, doubt, doubtful, I'm just going to say that. But for what it is, it is very, like I would say, it excels in a lot of, you know, roles. So this is a 70 liter pack and it weighs two pounds, a little bit over. So that is crazy to think, 70 liters, two pounds. And I was able to fit everything and additional items in this pack, ready to go. So that was my main pack, really enjoyed it. I also put on a pack scrim by Bees Combat Systems. This is their uh, sniper ghillie um, kind of pack cover, really nice um, waterproof setup. Um, let me break up or break up my outline and kind of blend into the environment very well. It's adjustable so you can stretch it out was more than enough. This is the large version was more than enough to go over the whole pack plus like a rifle on the outside and um, extra gear like my mat and stuff like that and it works extremely well. Next is going to be my day pack which I recommend you have just my recommendation. Um, it's on the packing list as well but a small day pack or a salt pack, depending on how you look at it, that you can stuff you know, temporary items and things like that that you'll need throughout your day. This is also a Hyperlite Mountain Gear pack. The only thing I don't like about these packs in general is they're a little loud. They're not like 500 Cordura nylon and stuff like that that is very quiet, but you get the weight and the waterproof. So that pack, like I was just saying, even though I set it down, it's a roll top, so you can roll it all the way down, and then it's waterproof. It just, that's what the fabric is. So you have a waterproof bag, and you have waterproof sacks that we'll go over to in this, so it's just multiple layers of keeping things dry. Same with this pack, orange in the center, so it reflects that light inside. Um, you could use it as a signal panel if you really need to. Um, I never did, but it was always a possibility. It's nice because it's set up left and right as water bottle holders, and that's what I used it for. I carried about four liters of water, four to five liters of water on me at all times, mainly because it was 90 degrees humidity and we were running around all over the place. 
So the one thing I do like about this pack is how it has shot cord. And this shot cord is why I kind of invested in it was so my helmet can slip in here and stay on the exterior of my pack along with my night vision would ride inside my helmet. I don't keep night vision on me. I'm just not one of those people. I know there's people out there that do that. Just doesn't fit my style and my rig. So it stays on my pack, which my day pack always stays with me like at all times. It is on my back. So the argument can be made, but this pack was really good. I also had one of the scrim um, from Bees Combat worked extremely well, uh, broke up my outline, you know, very easily, very quickly. So, all right, so that was the packs. So let's dive into sleep systems. So my sleep system, um, interesting things about it, honestly. Um, let's start off with the mat because this one's probably one of the more important items on here, which is, this is a Thermarest Z-Lite and I have been using these for years and I really like them. This one is specifically cut down from my shoulder to my knees just to lighten up a little bit of weight. Each one of these panels is about one ounce. So if you start lopping off panels, I mean, pull one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, whatever you prefer. Um, I know you can go shorter with it. Like, you know, I've seen people go waistline up. Um, personally, I'm not into that mainly because of the wet environment that I knew I was gonna go into. I wanted something, you know, dry that I could sit on and not absorb moisture. Now I did permethrin this too, so it did soak up some of the permethrin, but overall water is not gonna absorb through this and it just makes your back feel so much better. I do not recommend blow up mattresses, at least in this environment for Tusk. Um, you are constantly moving and going and it's annoying when you have to sit there and blow up this mattress because sometimes you're on time scales. So if you're on a time schedule and you're like, hey, I gotta go to sleep and I have two hours of sleep or less and then I need to wake up and go do watch. I don't wanna spend 15 minutes of my time trying to blow up a mattress and then have to wake up 15 minutes early just to get all the air out of it, which one, it's noisy and it's just, annoying and it can get punctured by random items because you don't have time to like police where you are. Plus you're going full, you know, no light. So you're not using red lens. You're not using white lens. You are in a dark night environment and you're not allowed to use flashlights depending on the enemy and where they are around you. This is so easy because you can just literally accordion it out, sit it down, rack out, and then you wake up and you're like, Hey, I'm up for a patrol in five minutes. <laughs> it's it's literally that simple. You don't have to worry about it. It's automatically there. Extend it out, stuff it back in, you're ready to go. Now, next item that I used fairly heavily is the Swag Man Roll. And as you see, it's got a ton of mud all over it because I used it a bit, uh, a good bit. Kept me warm and dry. Um, it does have that water resistance kind of feature to it. I wouldn't recommend it as a dedicated um, you know, poncho, but we'll get into that here in a second. But this thing definitely came in handy, especially when I put this down and then put this over top of me. I was super happy for the environment that honestly that I was in. It is a little bit expensive and I did use it as the poncho because it does have a hole in it that you can like drape it over you like a normal poncho. I did use that for an LPOP and it came in really, really nicely. So Next on the list is a poncho. I used a normal GI poncho and this thing went everywhere with me. I used it as a poncho. I used it as a blanket at some times. I used it as a ground sheet at some times. This came in crazy handy and I honestly didn't go anywhere without it. It was in my assault pack at all times. Highly recommended. It fits my needs, works out pretty well. At least for the course, it worked out really well and for not the course because I constantly use this even now. All right, next item. I have a large pyramid bug net that goes completely over your shelter. Didn't use it at all. Um, I did see other people bring the same exact thing and they did use it, but I just didn't really have the time or the want. Like, I guess I had the time. I just thought about it. I was like laying down. And then I was like, I'm not gonna get that thing. It's kind of in my pack and I don't feel like it. I'm just gonna go to bed. 
So pretty much um, it's in there. I would recommend bringing it though. And I would bring it again, knowing even though I didn't use it, there could be circumstances that I would want it. Next is a pillow. I was this close to not bringing a pillow. Pretty glad that I did. Did I actually need it? No, because you can use clothing and other items to do the same thing, put it in a dry bag, and then use it as a pillow. This was extremely beneficial, and I enjoyed it. It worked out for me. It is nine ounces, it is heavy, but this was my one comfort item that I brought that I was willing to send it on the weight. And I was very happy because I'm more of a promoting good sleep type of person. And if you do that, you get more restful rest and you can perform better the next day or fall asleep faster. So if you have an hour of an hour and a half to fall asleep and you're too busy tossing and turning for a half hour, and then you finally get to sleep, now you only have an hour worth of sleep. But if you're comfortable, you'll go to sleep faster. And that's what I kind of thought with this. Optional. You don't have to bring one. You can kind of do whatever you want. Tent stakes for my shelter. Didn't use them. It is what it is. Am I glad I brought them? Yeah, just in case. Kind of nice. Guy lines and um, tent stake lines. Didn't use them. Not a single bit at all. Um, would I bring them again? Uh, probably yes, just because maybe the next environment might be different. All right, so that was a sleep system. So let's go into the little tiny stuff, all the random little bits that I brought. All right, so kind of the odds and ends, the little things that I brought with me that one, I used or I thought that I would need in that moment or in that whole four day span. So I did bring a small bathroom kit with me as a little trowel, some wet wipes and some TP. Um, I would recommend this. I did use this and it was beneficial. I would not go anywhere without it because it's just a bad day if you don't. Um, I have a little eye cover thing for daytime use so you can sleep during the day. Thought I would use this. It literally weighs like 0.5 ounces. It weighs nothing. Never used it. Um, I thought that I might, and I would probably still bring it again because it literally weighs almost nothing, but it gives you a benefit if you need to take a nap during the day, put that thing on, light doesn't get through, you can fall asleep. Next, this little tiny kind of admin kind of pouch, or not even a pouch, but just little odds and ends. Um, I had a leather patch in here, mainly to pick up my titanium if I would heat it up. Didn't use it, and we'll get to that on uh, the water aspect um, here in a little bit, but I didn't use that patch at all. Deodorant, I did use it twice. Um, not needed, but it was more of a personal preference. It was like, hey, I wanted to kind of feel good, so I put that on. I felt a little bit better. Lighter Brillo pad, and then I have Esbit stove cubes in here along with a fire starter in here. I did not use those at all. Did not use the Esbit cubes to heat up anything, I just honestly didn't find the time to do it. Brought some tin foil just for heating up stuff, just in case, didn't use it. Um, here is a weapons cleaning kit. I did use this, I would recommend it. Worked out pretty good, I was able to clean because your weapon systems get dirty, shooting blanks and other stuff like that. So it's nice to take like two minutes and just wipe it down and be done. Next, this one was my day pack um, little tiny kit. It has a blister kit in it with Luco tape and some, you know, I, I forget what they call it. Um, it's like blister prevention stuff, moleskin, that's what it is. And this is a nice little kit along with Body Glide. Didn't use it, but I was really happy that it was there just because in case you start sweating and stuff and things start rubbing together that you don't want to rub together, it's nice to have that. And also some wet wipes. Uh, these things, the dude wipes are real tiny. They just, they're great to have. You can do body or showers with them and stuff. Baby wipe showers, I guess. And I've done, I did that a couple times there just to kind of attempt to stay cleanly. Um, fix it kit. Um, I've gone over this on multiple occasions on different videos. It has like seam sealer. It has like zip ties, duct tape, and then some mosquito netting, uh, patch kits and stuff, extra buckles. Didn't use it at all. Glad I had it though, because in case something broke, you know, I could fix it. Spare set of glasses, highly recommended. 
I did not need them, but a guy in my team did lose his glasses and he didn't have a spare set. So it was kind of like a bummer and pretty much the entire team was like, ooh, wow, I didn't think of that. Or some of them did think about it and they were like, ooh, this, that would have sucked if it was me. So I recommend bringing those. I also brought extra contacts with me. I ended up not even taking my contacts out the entire time, which they're day night contacts. So they're okay. They're able to do that. I selected them on purpose because I'm in the military and I deal with stuff like that a lot of times. So I requested ones that I could sleep with and they worked out, but I was glad I had these, uh, super lightweight, but cheap insurance for if you lose your eyesight, what good are you? Cool. Um, here's some, ibuprofen, some, you know, diatome, um, antidiarrheals, of course, and then hydrocodone, stuff like that. Um, I did use ibuprofen multiple times because I was hurting because after sleeping on a concrete floor um, with no pad and, no, and nothing, just literally my day pack, I wasn't too much of a happy camper and my back hurt. So <laughs> I just sent it, but uh, it, it is what it is. Each tusk course is different. So you honestly, you don't know what you're going to get. So your experience may vary if you go. You may be put in that situation. You may not. All right, let's get into electronics a little bit. So I bought an Anchor 10,000 milliamp uh, battery charger. Mainly this was for my Beofeng radios and my watch, which I have, you know, one of these small charging cables that has like the original Android, then USB-C, then the charger for my watch. Um, the, both of these things didn't use, didn't use them at all. Uh, my watch was great. I used it and I went down 19% on this Garmin Tactic 7 Delta Solar Pro Ballistics. No, this is Garmin Tactic 7, not the Delta. Garmin Tactic 7 Pro Ballistics model. Out of four days, it went down 19%, which is really good. I also had a charger and a extra battery for my Beofang for comms, which we did use. I was just very, very cognizant on when I use comms, didn't even break out the second battery. I didn't even charge the first battery. It's still on, I think, 40% as we speak right now. The thing was trucking through. I mean, I was surprised. If I would go through it again, I probably wouldn't even bring an extra radio battery, which you should tactically, but I was very surprised with it. Triple A's, uh, didn't even use them. Uh, an extra 2032, uh, didn't use them at all, uh, but I still would recommend bringing some of those just in case. Double A's, which are in my other pack, which I'll get to here in a little bit, uh, didn't use those either. Um, I just used the ones that were already in it and they worked fine the whole time. Extra cordage. Didn't use it. Glad that I had it though. And now here is this kind of a game changer now. I guess this goes into clothing, but it is kind of in admin. This is a head net. And this is what saved me. This thing was like the MVP of the entire course in my opinion, because it kept the mosquitoes off of me, especially when I was sleeping. I would actually just wear my boonie cap all like pretty much all the time when I wasn't running my helmet, which I'll get to here in a second. And I'd put this over top and I would just sleep in it. And then if I would get bit up in my hands, I would actually just stuff my hands like inside my shirt. And then I would just fall asleep again if I didn't, because sometimes it was too hot to put like the whole whoopee on top of me. But this thing, the head net, Sea to Summit head net, awesome. Highly recommend it. It came in handy like every single second, pretty much, unless you were moving around. Next, let's dive into the helmet real quick. The helmet is an ops core bump with the Bees Combat System uh, scrim on top of it, the helmet cover, um, really cool, breaks up the outline, um, Wilcox mount, and then just the common insert. I did run PVS 14s, dual PVS 14s, um, don't think you have to though. If you're at this course and you're worried or you're wanting to go to the course, you're like, ah, I don't have night vision. Go anyways. You don't need night vision. I used it a lot. Yes, it came in handy and pretty much 99% of the teammates that were there with me had nods, but it's not really necessary. There was, I think, one or two dudes that didn't have nods and they did just fine. The information that you get from the course honestly outweighs. So don't let certain gear items stop you from going. Don't be like, oh, I kind of need that and I'll wait. Just go to the course without it. You're not going to need it. The information 
is more important than you wanting to be cool or being able to see at night or anything like that. Just, just trust me. Just go to the course if you don't have it. It's, it's way well worth it. Um, it ra ra or this rode around in a little pouch that I had some neoprene um, knee pads that I stuck in there to put my nods inside so they don't get broken up. And then this, the nods would ride inside my helmet and the helmet would be on the back of my A bag or assault bag. So that's what I ran for this. And that was kind of my admin-ish little tiny stuff. So next up is going to be clothing. All right, so we're working our way through. Let's push into clothing right now. So base layers. What did I run as base layers? All right, so initially starting out, merino wool everything for the most part, except for a jacket, which we'll get into. Now, my base layer was this Sheep's Run um, t-shirt. I use these in the military every single day. This is what I run. I don't run cotton anymore. So I just threw one of these in because it kind of blends in, you know, very well with foliage and stuff because it's the Coyote Brown. These things dry extremely quick. They keep you warm. They're breathable. Highly recommended. I really enjoy these things. They're a little pricey, but once you slowly take time to build them up, um, extremely beneficial. Um, boxer briefs set up and they're the same exact merino wool. They were really nice. Um, sweat through them, whichever antimicrobial so you don't smell as bad. They can go for a couple days without changing them if necessary. I changed mine out once just because honestly I didn't have the time, which some of you are gonna be like, how did you not have time? I'm like, you'll, you'll just understand when you get there. You may be able to make time, but I was more worried about other priorities, especially because I was a team leader and people joke as team leader is like Tusk 1.5, which I've seen in other YouTube videos, which I didn't understand until I got there. And then I understood, I'm like, hey, you're dealing with a lot more stuff than common stuff. But we swapped out team leads and stuff like that so other people could get advantages of. Speaking about teams real quick, my team was freaking awesome. So if you guys are watching this, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, heck, you guys did great. Hopefully I did pretty good for y'all. But let's continue down on base layer. So socks. So merino wool socks or darn tough socks. These are the super thin ones. I have three pairs of these and I changed them out quite a bit because I did get soaked and we're going to talk about boots here in a second. Oh boy. So I also had sock liners, these really thin ones. These are nice because after they get soaked, they dry out super quickly and they're not thick like these. These take a little bit of time to dry out, but uh, I would recommend uh, several pairs of socks, whatever you prefer, prefer merino wool, but it is what it is. Speaking about feet, all right, so here's the two stuff that I used. I used Solomon XA Forces Pros, and these are Gore-Tex. I have a love-hate relationship with Gore-Tex, mainly because in the early mornings or when there was dew or a little bit of mud and water on the ground, you were good. You didn't get your feet wet whatsoever, and it was great. But as soon as you traverse through something that the water line goes above these, instant misery because the water can't escape Gore-Tex. And there was multiple times that I went over my boots and I was just like, oh man, this is miserable. We still got to put down another couple kilometers and we are soaked because I just walked through a swamp. This is going to suck. So benefits, trade-offs. It's up to you what you run. Um, there's also benefits of wearing mesh shoes at all times because then you can be, hey, I'm going to be wet all the time, but they're going to dry fast. Or do you be wet some of the time and dry some time? But when you do get wet with these, it's all absolutely miserable. So if you do run Gore-Tex or even anything in general, bring flip-flops or Crocs. I prefer Crocs because they can secure on the back. So if you're hanging out back at your you know, main establishment and these are drying somewhere, if you would get attacked in that moment, flip-flops, you can't really move around that great. If you put the back straps on your Crocs and just have your no socks in them, you can at least move around your structures pretty well in Crocs and still be able to fight immediately around your base camp and stuff like that, which they did come in handy. And honestly, these were, were in my assault pack because I like dry feet. I do not like wet feet. Big issue for me. So 
highly recommended. Granted, your mileage will vary. Like I said, every Tusk course is slightly different. The curriculum is the same, but the environments that they put you in and kind of things they make you do, different. So you could bring Crocs and never use them and be like, the guy on YouTube told me to bring them and I never used them. Maybe. You just never know. They worked out for me, so your mileage may vary. So, also, I brought extra soles for these. These are just kind of cheap ones. I did use them once after they got completely soaked. I slipped these in when I had to go on another patrol and they were kind of wet. These made all the difference because you have dry soles, so you at least don't get the moisture from the bottom. Just, hey, change my socks out in a nice warm or nice new socks, put my shoes in, and they're wet again in two seconds. This prevented some of that. They were still a little damp, but they worked out in the long run. All right, next for clothing wise, I brought a quarter zip merino wool. This is kind of like a waffle top, but it's merino wool. Sheep's Run makes this as well. And I was worried that I was gonna get cold in the middle of the night, potentially. Didn't use this thing at all. Wish I didn't bring it because it was just excess weight. I think it was like nine ounces or something like that that never got touched. Kind of a bummer. Boonie cap, of course. I love the boonie cap, just my personal preference. I literally used it 99% of the time. If I wasn't wearing the boonie cap, it was a helmet with nods. And if I wasn't wearing a helmet with nods, I was wearing my boonie cap, specifically with the head net in certain times and stuff like that. Now, let's move on. Before we go to the jacket and everything, let's go on to the pants. I have quite a bit to talk about the pants because I really like these things. I'm literally wearing them right now. I'm actually wearing the opposite color colors that I wore at the uh, class. So I wore these coyote brown with a green top, and this is kind of opposite. Just because I like the pants and the top so much, I wear them regularly. So these are true spec expedition pants, 24 sevens, I think is what they're called. These things are awesome. And I like these before the class, and this class just solidified why these things are so awesome. So in the sides, like you have cargo pockets, like up in here, they're in the front, not the sides, which I really like when they're in the front, but down the side of them, they have this zipper. You can unzip it and it opens up to mesh. So that mesh, these are pants that feel like shorts. So air can get in there, but not mosquitoes and ticks. Really nice. And those are on both sides. Also down at your ankles. Unzip, mesh inside. So you don't have to worry about bugs and other stuff like that. One cool thing that this has as well is they have hooks on the bottom of your pants. So these are meant to hook into your laces so if you're moving around quite a bit, they kind of act like gaiters and they hold to your boots or your shoes so they don't ride up. Now I did do a modification of these which really came in handy is the knees have a slot for knee pads, but they tend to kind of slide out over time. So I just sewed in some Velcro. So I did put these in here absolute game changer to put inserts in these things. My knees do not hurt. And I'm telling you, you are on your knees, you're on your stomach a lot at this course because you're moving around getting attacked and you're not going to just stand up and go, oh, there's guys 150 meters away shooting at me. I'm going to shoot back standing up. No, you're going to lay down in the prone position, crawl over to some small micro terrain and then use that as cover and then your team and bounding and all kinds of stuff like that. Knee pads, highly recommended. These things are nice, even the external ones. If you don't want to do the internal ones, just do the external ones. Hugely beneficial. I recommend it um, for any class. It doesn't have to be for Tusk. I mean, honestly, I wear these out when I'm doing stuff now. So, and I have before. Now the top that I ran is exactly the same one that I'm running. It's just, I used it in green, mainly because um, the tops of the trees and stuff like that were green and the bottom were kind of dead foliage. So I figured I'd blend in a little bit better, but this is a, um, what is this? Outdoor Ventures, the really thin, this is like a fly fishing kind of button up. 
and you can roll the sleeves and they button up so you can wear it as kind of like a t-shirt if necessary. It has mesh in the back. This is ultra lightweight wicking. And if you get wet in this, it dries super, super fast. Also, I permethrined the crap out of the pants and this shirt and it came in handy. Some guys were, you know, saying, hey, I, had, I found 16 ticks on me. I was lucky to only find one. No, take that back. I found two, but they were on externally crawling, and I just saw one, so I snagged it and took care of it. Didn't have any tick bites whatsoever. So that permethrin did help, and I recommend that. All right, moving into the jacket. This is just a military issue jacket, actually, a multicam one. This is the uh, jacket wind cold weather gen 3 that the military issues which is funny it says cold weather but this thing works really well because it's very mesh and it breathes very well so i will i ran this in the mornings when it was a little bit chilly and at night when i was a little chilly and i had some camouflage and it was also water resistant so we did have a massive thunderstorm that came in and just poured us out and i ran that with my poncho and this plus that um, this is breathable and the poncho is so open on the bottom, it worked out pretty well. This is water resistant and I didn't have any issues. I did bring rain gear with me, getting down almost to the end of just the clothing section. I did run um, rain gear, couldn't think of it. Tops and bottoms, did not use the tops one bit, would not bring them again to that environment. Now, depending on your environment, me up north where I am now, I'd probably still use it just because it's different because the humidity just traps all that stuff in. I did use the pants a single time for like 20 minutes and it was a mistake because I put them on because I didn't want to get my, you know, my legs wet because there's so much dew and stuff on the ground. Worked out for that. Should have just ran gaiters, realistically, recommend gaiters. Um, but I wore these and then I was like, man, this is a terrible idea. I am so hot and sweaty in these things. I cannot breathe. So that patrol really sucked. And I will not be using those again. If I ever go back to Tusk, I will not be bringing tops and bottoms rain gear. I will just be running my poncho and call it good. So everything clothing wise that I wasn't wearing went into this Mac sack, which was pretty nice. All, ultimately, you can compress it down. All the air gets out of it. The Marine Corps uses these. Um, really nice and beneficial. That's where I put a lot of stuff. Next is they recommended a BDU cotton top. I brought it and I never used it. Probably should have, but I don't like cotton because it soaks up and it just stays there. So this rode around in my pack all day and I kept debating because of you know PID purposes. You want woodland because it's different than what the enemy is. So your guys can differentiate between friend and foe so you don't get smoked as friendly fire. Didn't really have that issue. Did have it once, but um, this would have come in handy, but I didn't use it because I hate cotton. <laughs> so, so it didn't really work out. So that's all my clothing right now, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I guess the next portion is we're going to dive into my chest rig, my carrier, and we're going to blow it all out and show you everything that I'm running on my carrier and how it implements with my gear and how it worked for me. All right, so my chest rig kind of setup. I already did a dedicated video on how to actually put this all together, so I'm not gonna show you how to like actually put it together, but I'm gonna show you everything that's actually inside of it. This is a full tang tactical um, kit bag with B's combat system wings, along with a couple extra pouches, a Feral Concept mini dangler, and then a Feral Concepts roll one trauma kit that I have a water bottle actually into, which I'll show you here in a second. But let's just dive into the details on the right-hand side very quickly and show you how I have everything set up. So this is a traditional kind of H harness setup, which is what I really prefer. And the whole intent behind this was to have a pistol with me, which this accommodated for that, which I'll get to here in a second. So the right-hand side, I typically like to keep slick because I am a right-handed shooter. So I don't like a lot of stuff on my right side because I like my stock to go back inside, especially when I'm doing high port or anything like that, muzzle up. I don't like that stock interfering with like a massive pouch, which some people are okay with that. I am not, I'm still attempting to get used to that setup, but 
I don't like it, so I just ran two smaller pouches here. Now this one on the far back is my comms pouch, is a Baofeng. The antenna is currently missing just because of transport reasons. When I flew, I didn't want this long antenna sitting out and getting snapped off, so it's somewhere around here. Um, but I ran the larger battery and this came in handy greatly, especially as a team leader. And then the alt team leader is I could communicate to people fairly easily and pretty much it was on the side and I never really took it out. Um, mainly this is very in there too. I'd recommend tethering things because we did have multiple radios go missing because like over time it would just come out like an open top. This one has Velcro so it's like it's hard to like lose it but it was routed up here with a push to talk, a whisper mic, and this is primarily what I ran. I did have one that ran up to my ear, but I was honestly too lazy to break it out. I just kept fiddling with the uh, audio, the adjustment, so like the enemy couldn't hear, and I would just like tilt my head down to listen to very, you know, quiet conversations and stuff like that. Definitely came in handy. I would recommend a whisper mic and a Baofeng of some sort, specifically tethered. Next, this next pouch down here, this was intended to be a smoke grenade pouch, but since I flew on an aircraft, I can't take pyrotechnics with me. So it was kind of a bummer. So I was like, okay, well, do I really need this? Uh, what should I put in there? So I put a small monocular, one of these Vortex um, ones. I used it one time. And for the weight, again, I actually wouldn't bring it again. Um, it kind of came in handy, but I have an ACOG on my rifle, which we'll get to in a little bit when I do my rifle setup. I'll show you, you know, did I really need it? That's, it's a four power. This is a 10 power. It's definitely better. But like I said, I only used it once and it wasn't that beneficial. So I wouldn't use it again. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you want one, maybe you're more observation wise, but um, during the daytime, it's a little bit easier to see, but when it comes to nighttime, I still was able to see through my ACOG with nods on, which some people say you can't, but you absolutely can, just a little more difficult. So exterior-wise, we're going to move over to the left-hand side real quick before we get in the main pouch. So left-hand side, I had gloves attached to the outside. Definitely used these gloves quite a bit, especially like patrolling and stuff like that, so my fingers didn't get tore up, especially I have like you know, I did, it's just callous, but when you're holding your safety all the time, uh, you tend to get a lot of rubbing. Um, Left-hand side. So this was my kind of do everything pouch or my food pouch. In here, I kept all the little tiny snacks that I would need throughout the day. So literally right now I have some leftover tortillas, some cheese spread, some Nature Valleys, um, honey, some also granola bars. I had some mayo in here along with tuna packets were in here and I could pretty much just eat on the move. I was constantly rolling, just unzip. Hey, you know, five minute break, sit here. Cool. Break something out, eat it real quick. Um, I did use an IR chem stick as a buzzsaw. This is a new one that I just stuffed in here real quick. Did that did come in handy. VS 17 panel is in here. That came in handy. I used it a couple times. And then also down in here, I have an IR strobe, the nine volt variant. Um, didn't use it, but uh, it's so lightweight. It was kind of whatever. Uh, I was kind of happy that I had it. So let's just stuff out to the side. Now, magazine wise, I was running five mags. I have three in the front here in the normal thing. And then I have two of the warrior poet wings. And I did not go through five mags in a sitting. I went through maybe two in one specific firefight. Um, up front, I carry a blue chem stick, used it, and I carried a green chem stick in here. Used them both. I resupplied and I put them back in here. So that was beneficial. I would recommend that. Moving down to the bottom, like I said, Feral Concepts Mini Dangler. I had my medical stuff in there, real world medical stuff, not just trainer stuff. The tourniquet is a trainer, but uh, the medical stuff was real. I had a real tourniquet on me as well. Now the bottom, I did have the Roll One Trauma Kit and I had a water bottle in there. As you can see, it was a little bit used and it came in handy, especially on the run. I hate water bottles that run vertical because they take up too much space in my opinion. Next is I had a dump pouch on the side here, really nice just to throw, you know, trail mix, snacks, 
um, extra gear, you know, whatever's necessary at the time. You can just immediately throw in there and honestly not really worry about it at all. And you can kind of cinch it up. This is a flatline fiber co and it goes underneath the molly so it really tucks out of the way. So let's dive into the main pouch of this. Okay, so the main pouch, I had a notebook. Highly recommended you bring a bigger notebook like this because you are going to take a ton of notes, massive, at least you should. You paid a, a good amount of money for these courses. You need to, you know, take notes so you can remember when you come back. Red chem stick in here, I did use it. Sticks up here at the top. Um, flashlight with a red lens. I used this a couple times. Not a lot, but I definitely did. Pencil, Sharpie, and then two matte pens. These are Viz Viz pens, very handy. I did use the Purell um, hand uh, sanitizer. Definitely came in handy, especially when you don't have the water availability to actually wash your hands all the time because water is so key. Um, also little admins like, uh, AA batteries, stuff like that. Didn't use them. This is a, a little bit of a divider in here. And then I also ran a pistol in the back here. Um, didn't use it a single bit. If I would do it over again, I would not run a pistol again, just because I always have a mindset. I have to have a pistol on me just because in my current active duty life, I do have a pistol on me at all times. So kind of debatable now in the bottom here, lots of drip drop and Pedialyte, definitely you need to have these on you. Honestly, in my opinion, these came in handy. I had like two to three of these a day just to keep me hydrated and continue to push forward. Now they kind of just resided down here in the bottom and then I had a compass, didn't use it. I used my watch compass and that was about it. I didn't use a lot. Um, I did have a map in here. Um, I since gave it off to another team member and then the map was gone and never saw it again, whatever. I don't really care. It was used for a purpose. I used it like every single day until the last day when I handed it out to somebody. So it was very easy to get in and out, especially when you take notes. It's nice because you can just, you know, slip this in here, pull it back out, slip it in here, pull it like it's very easy to access and it just one hand to actuate it which is fairly nice. So this was my full kit. I like it. I am not changing it. It is exactly the way I like it. And you can see it's really tore up on the front because I was on my stomach quite a bit. It does stick out a little bit. Some people can argue. I like it this way, just my personal preference. Um, you can go take a look at my other videos if you want to see how you can build this kit yourself. Uh, I have a video up on that. So Yep, that's my kit. So let's dive into water kit and then closing thoughts and we're we're done. We're done with this thing. All right, so the water kit. Pretty much what everybody honestly talks about is water, 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 water at Tusk. And there is a pretty substantial reason why you talk about water and you learn a lot about water. So be mindful, this water kit was what I thought that I needed. There is some, gonna be some revisions to this coming up in the future because I learned so much at the course that some of this stuff is acceptable, but not as good as it could be, especially for volume basis of water and stuff like that. So receptacles of what I use, or containers, I guess you could say. What containers did I specifically use? I use these HydroPack Seekers. This is a two liter. I carried this two liter filled, for the most part, unless I was hardcore drinking it, everywhere with me. This thing was always filled in my day pack, ready to go, and I would drink from it, or I would keep a bottle like this, in my back and then I would transfer this to this because this was just easier to drink out of in my opinion, especially the one that you saw on my chest rig, uh, how it slips in the bottom here. Um, I would alternate the small one and the large one. Typically the large one stayed in there unless I went completely dry. Also, I ran the Keith Titanium um, Canteen and this thing was awesome. So pretty much these three to four, including that other thing, was always filled with water and I was consuming it 
throughout my day. Now here's a four liter. I never use this four liter. I never needed this much water for me personally. It's kind of like this middle ground gap that's like, it's a little too much for an individual, but it's absolutely way not enough for a group of people. So why would you even want to bring this? Because it's so heavy, it's gonna weigh you down. So when we get into like talking about groups and stuff like that, I'll kind of explain here in a second. But outdoor research mesh bag, these things breathe very well. So that's why I wanted it uh, along with another mesh bag that I could throw filters in here and let them breathe. Never ended up using it just because we were constantly using a filter. Now this filter system is what I used. And this one's kind of a, this is a uh, Sawyer squeeze. And this has the um, Katadin slash Hydropack um, quick disconnect adapters onto them, which I did use and I really enjoyed. Now the one that we used a good bit, at least 30%, because there was a couple other kits that we were running, but this was a six liter Katadin open top. It's a roll top and you can open it so you can dip it down in or pour water into it and whatnot. And then you just, of course, roll this back up and then you can hang it or whatever you want. And the cool thing is this clips in or connects in like that. And then you have a little um, adjuster here that you can let water flow or you push this down and it cuts off the water. So you can stuff this in a canteen or something like that or another water bottle and it'll filter your water for you. This was used fairly heavily, but on more of a massive scale. Now I wish this is a six liter uh, pack I or a six liter, liter uh, bladder. I wish I would have went with a 10 liter. It probably would have worked out much better in a group format, but the six liter was fine because I was in between that mention of him with a small team slash just me. What's too big, what's too small. If you want to know the details all on that, what's best for you, go take the class. They're going to tell you a ton of stuff about water. I can't even regurgitate all that information that they taught us. By looking back in my notes, I probably could, but that's not my material to teach you. It is them because they coined it, they created it, they implement it, let them do the teaching. Okay, so filter-wise, I have a Sawyer squeeze over there, right? So I wanted to have backup methods as well, just in case, because what if that blows out? So I also used, or I actually didn't use it, but I had it, is a B-free filter. Um, I like these, I've used these in the past, figured I would use it, just didn't get around to it because the Sawyer was just solidly trucking through without any issues. Also, uh, Hydropack makes their own now, and then this was also going to be another filter. Um, kind of the same exact setup. This one's just enclosed with the quick disconnect. You can just connect it off of there and then go from there. Um, so I had three filters on me, mainly because of clogging. I was worried about particulate getting inside, and then it was toast. We had a couple filters in day one that just freaking toasted. And it wasn't because of the filter. It was just because we as a team didn't know what we were doing yet. And that's why the course instructs you and shows you how to do things properly. And as the days went on, we got instruction. It really helped out a lot and was just like a slap in the face to you going, wow, I did not know that water was so difficult and there were so many things to think about. That's a big hitter of the course. Next, treatment methods. So of course, depending on how it is. Um, filter wise, will not get, you know, viruses and other microscopic, like way tiny stuff um, out of there. So you do need to treat. Um, these are uh, small ones for quartz. Did not use a single one of these. Um, glad I had them though, because that was for personal use. What I did use or what we used is the bulk method. And this is for like four gallons or 15 liters. So you drop one of these in like, say a 20 liter, um, container or something like that, wait 30 minutes, and then this will kill off everything inside it after you're done filtering. So you'll figure all that out when you get there. Just run what, what, with what you have. Um, there's gonna be so much more details on it. Just literally the class is awesome and you need to really dive into it. Here's a miscellaneous little tiny uh, sack that I had extra O-rings in just in case like the Sawyer blew out or something. 
Um, I had extra, let me dig in here real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I had a pre-filter. This did kind of come in handy. These like little tiny ones. I'll put it down there so you guys can actually kind of see it. And it's just like a garden hose pre-filter. So particulate doesn't get stopped up in your uh, filter. All right. So lastly, um, drip drop again. And like whatever it is, hydro or liquid IV and then Pedialyte's highly recommended, like three or four of those things a day. Eh, probably not that much, probably two to three a day. Also, it conceals the water taste if the water's really bad and it gives you a boost in, you know, electrolytes and stuff like that. So this is my water kit. Be, make note, this was not a perfect water kit. I would, I'm going to make some modifications to this because of what I learned, but this is what I brought and it worked pretty decently. Not perfect, but it worked and you'll take the class and find out. So that was my water kit and let's push on to pretty much one last thing, which is weapons and or rifle and ammunition and uh, closing thoughts. All right, so rifle armament and ammo management. So I get a gate or I did a dedicated video on my rifle, right? SBR, ACOG Red Dot, PEC 15, Surefire, um, Hybrid 46, CAN. Uh, this is an 11 and a half inch uh, BCM, SBR lowered, Blue Force Gear Sling, and then the Sling Holder or the, whatever they call it from uh, this, the Magnet from Warrior Poet Society. Definitely worked out, dual tape switch. Any issues with this rifle? No. It's really not a rifle course, and they don't really care what type of rifle you bring. As long as it's an AR-type weapon system to use the bolt that they need to for the uh, blanks and stuff like that, they honestly really don't care. I've saw people with like uh, uh, Mark 18s, shorties, like 10.3s, and we had guys run 18-inch rifles with uh, suppressors. Didn't really make a difference at all run wood flatter you have. You don't have to have super cool Gucci stuff to be there and do the course. This rifle worked perfectly for me. I had no issues. It did malfunction twice on me, but I was putting a large volume of fire um, through it and I didn't clean it on that aspect, which I told you I did clean it, but I cleaned it after the fact that it jammed. So ammo management, how did I manage my ammo? So of course I had, like I showed you, I had five up front and I had another five in the back ready to go, or at least four. So here is just a simple bandolier. It's like a little fabric one. And these are really nice because they do exactly what they're intended for. If I need to, they fold up fairly nice in like a pack and stuff. Like you can just slip them in the back. That's what I did for easy access. And if I needed to, I kind of staged it so I could grab this and I just pulled it right out. And if I needed to, you can just throw this over you. And now you have a bunch of ammo ready to go. You can hand it out to other folks and whatnot. I still had one extra magazine just kind of hanging out, but uh, I didn't end up going through with it. So these little fabric bandoliers are fairly easy to come by. You can find them for super cheap. And uh, they just work. Yeah, is there better stuff out there? Sure, but for the weight and for the cost, I mean, what, what's seriously better than other than just stuffing them in your pack? And then as you're moving around, the magazines tend to shift. And then if you need to, you're down on the ground, you ditch your pack, and then you're like, oh, I need another mag. And then you start digging around and pulling out other stuff like, okay, well, I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. <laughs> With this, just pull it out easy to go, hand it off to someone if someone else needs it. Like if you're running up to an LPOP and the LPOP has been engaged all night, like, hey man, I've been I'm running, running low on ammo. You just go, there's extra ammo, have a great one. <laughs> and you, just, you just roll out unless you're relieving them. So ammunition wise, uh, that's about it. One thing aside from the weapon system that I forgot to mention, which is fairly important, I would say, is a thermocell. I brought it, did not use it, single bit. Forgot about it, it was sitting here in the corner, forgot to mention it. But yeah, for mosquitoes, 
I thought I would use it. I thought about using it. Like literally I was laying there. I'm like, hey, the mosquitoes are around. <sighs> I don't feel like going in my pack. I just have my head net. I'm happy. And literally it just went with that. So I carried all this excess weight along with the butane cartridges and stuff. Never used it. Ear mileage may vary. I've seen other people use theirs and they were happy. And I would have been too. If the mosquitoes were like swarming hardcore, I would probably use it. But in the environment and the time that I had it, I didn't use it. So I literally just ran down. I have no idea how long this video is. I would argue 45, 50 minutes probably. I have no idea. We've just been cruising. So this is a long one. I went in detail. Um, yeah, this is what I brought. Don't copy it. Use what you have. The intent is to buy your stuff after the course. This just gives you kind of an idea to go, okay, why well, have similar stuff? Like you don't have the same boots. You don't have the same gun. You don't have the same chest carrier, but it's all there. You're like, I have a chest carrier. I have boots. I have a poncho. I have rain. I have water procurement needs. That's the intent is like this overview is meant to look at it is, hey, am I missing any particular large items, not specific stuff like, Oh, he has a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46. I have to get that. Do not do that. I, I don't recommend it. Like, I, I recommend the suppressor, of course, but just don't go over specific things that I showed you. Run with what you have. This course will open your mind so, so much. Save your money till you come back from the course and then buy your stuff. That's the whole purpose of it. Excellent course. I would do it again. I probably will do it again in the future just to see how it changes in a few years. Super, super awesome time. Super miserable, awesome time if you want to run it as that. Um, not going to get in the details because if I give everything away, you're not going to learn because learning from experience or you doing it is way better than me just talking about it because you actually doing it and living it, the human brain is interesting like that. So that was all my gear. Worked out for me. There's not a lot of stuff that I would change. Like I said, a few things I would, but ultimately uh, I've done stuff like this a little bit before, so I had a good idea. So other than that, yeah. So like, subscribe, comment. If you guys want to see me do more courses like this, review my gear, do an after action report, stuff like that, definitely like, subscribe. If you guys have any questions, I'll do my best of my ability um, to answer them. But if you're answering direct questions like, hey, at this time, did this happen at Tusk? I'm going to kind of say, maybe, because I want you to experience it for yourself. I'm not going to give you all the answers to the test. The test's not hard. The test doesn't have a written test. You know what I mean. But yeah, so stuff like that. So we have PayPal, Patreon, Amazon affiliate link. If you guys want to buy certain stuff, like I said, and try not to, but if you do, it's going to be in the description box below just to help me with a few cents and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yep, so that was my loadout, and uh, yeah, worked out. So, y'all have a great day.